All right, um, so my talk's really about testing without a GUI uh, using test complete. And most people think about test complete that you only do GUI testing. And so I'm gonna show you an innovative way to do that. Um, I've been working for Harris Corporation for 14 years. I've been doing automated testing for 17 years. I actually used to work for Xerox and I started as a technician out in the field and then worked my way up to field engineering and then also I was a system engineer and then actually a software developer. I've done automation on existing programs and a successful use of also CI and CD. I currently am the DevOps lead for a program and the customer mandated uh, that we use automation um, in developing our product. Um, I'm married for 36 years. I have three kids, uh, six grandkids. And it's really uh, wonderful. You know, I heard somebody say once that uh, grandkids are the reward for not killing your children. And there's a lot of truth to that. And uh, in fact, um, on Facebook, my, uh, my daughter-in-law, she posted this about my, my granddaughter. I wanted to share it with you guys. It said, uh, she goes, Eden, I get frustrated when I tell you it's time to leave the playground and you lay on the ground and won't move. And my granddaughter's response is, when you say I have to go, but I want to keep playing, my legs get broke. So it just, I just love it. It was like, yes. Anyways, I also enjoy playing racquetball. Okay, so what was happening was I, um, I was working on a program where I started to realize that I needed to uh, interact, not just with a GUI interface, but I needed to uh, log into some Linux servers and to be able to turn on or turn off uh, services. I had to load databases, uh, wipe out databases, and even start up simulators or stop simulators. And what I was uncovering was that I was only going to be able to run about 30% of all the automation I want to do um, if I wasn't going to be able to interact uh, with my Linux servers. You need to understand um, in the world that I work in, in the government world, very, very highly complex, very large systems, and very secure and isolated. So typically I had like 14 different servers I needed to log into. So I was very limited with the automation that I wanted to do. And so I also needed to log everything that I did uh, and record all those results from those uh, logs on the Linux servers. So I started looking around and I started to realize that PuTTY is an application, it's a, a terminal emulator if you're not familiar with it, that is uh, free and it's an industry standard. Well, the really cool thing is test complete, can see PuTTY because it's an application on Windows. And the nice thing is you can actually identify multiple Linux or multiple uh, PuTTY terminals by changing the title bar. So you can have a, a unique uh, terminal for every server that you need to log into. If you're at a lower level, if you're actually in a Linux box and you wanted to go to another Linux box, you would have to SSH into that. With being in a Windows environment, you can actually just go to each terminal that you want. So you're able to uh, actually move around and see your data flow from one server to the next. So one of the nice things that PuTTY gives you is it's able to copy all the contents that's being displayed uh, in the terminal into the clipboard. And then also you can clear back the scroll back. So using that feature, what we were able to do was, instead of doing an OCR on the screen, we were able to capture all the data from PuTTY and actually put that into an array and then manipulate the results. And the key part of it is it's 100% accurate. You're not counting on OCR being accurate. You're actually getting the ASCII information coming back and you're capturing that. So I wanted to show you some um, code here and this is actually the core of how it works. So basically you identify the object, the putty object, and I always put in a restore and activate because a lot of times 
If you have a lot of putty windows open, you want to minimize it, and then you want to open it back up and make that the active window so uh, test complete can find it. Then after that, you make the system call to actually cop copy all the contents that's in memory uh, to the clipboard. And then after that, you just assign it a variable name. Then what we do is we actually log the complete contacts into the log messaging of test complete. That gives me a record, so if I want to do any auditing, what actually happened, I'm able to see that. Uh, and then I actually split it up and put it into an array. I clean up the array for any uh, blank spaces, and then I clear the scroll back, and then I actually return the array results. And that's pretty much all you have to do um, to actually capture the data from PuTTY and then be able to manipulate it. Some of the libraries, so once you develop that, what you want to do is start to build a library of all the different calls. Uh, so you want, to have a, you want to have a method that launches the PuTTY windows. You want to have different, two different types of commands. So when I ran into this problem and I realized PuTTY was a solution, I really started praying about and thinking about, okay, how can I how can I maximize this solution? And I started to realize that in a Linux environment, everything is based off a of command, and you just add to that command and you pipe it. So if you're familiar with Linux, you're able to do that. And so there's two different types of commands though. One is where you just send to the command and you don't wait for the return of results. And the other is you actually have to wait for the results to come back. And so I'm gonna give you a little demo of how that works. Um, and you also have to look at the prompt. So if you're waiting for the results to come back, you're looking for the prompt to come back. And so there's a little fuzzy match there. Uh, you want also the Linux path as you're passing in information. It's always easier to put the forward slash in. The clear command, the CD command, the LS command. You can see all I'm doing is all t different types of commands. And the reason I created the library for is for other users who didn't understand the lower level, I was trying to supply them a way to, to use this library. Um, you also a diff command, a kill command, uh, looking at file properties and wanting to get that information if you're trying to figure out the correct file you want, um, even the file type. Sometimes I ran into problems with, okay, I got a file, the names are slightly different because they have a date and timestamp, so I want to find the, the latest and greatest, so I need to look at the property of the date and timestamps. Um, even I created VI commands, so I could go in and edit a file, make the changes, and then even a, a time and date array where you're able to capture that time and date and then be able to manipulate that. So I want to give you guys a demonstration of how this all works. So if you guys can switch it over for me, please. All right, let me see here. Let's see if that works. Okay. So I have uh, four different tests, and these are just pretty simple tests. So I have my, my Linux terminal here on the, on the right, and then I have my test complete here on the left. And this first test, all I'm really doing is I'm uh, restoring if the PuTTY window was closed, I'm changing directory, and then I'm gonna do a ls listing. And you can see my variables I'm passing in right here. So I'm just gonna run this and I'll show you. So it's, it's put in the command, and it's now going to do the listing. And what you're going to see is it's going to take a little bit. So I'm actually logging in uh, down in Florida right now uh, to get the long listing result. And I picked this directory structure because um, it's very long, and it takes a while to pull back. So what you see flashing is every second I go back and I check the prompt, and I'm looking for what the results are. And so I don't see any results yet, so it's, it's still turning through, trying, waiting for those results. Now, I had tried this earlier and it worked. Um, okay, here it goes. So, all right, so now it finished up. Now, if I go look 
at the results here. And I open this up. All right. What you can see is it's captured every, every, everything. And you can even see all the commands that I've executed here um, are captured. And if I go in here and I export this and look in IE, it'll list everything out. So even though it scrolled off the screen, it didn't matter because everything was in the buffer. All right. The next one is a simple changing directory and then just doing a tail on a, on a log file. And you can see right here, it's very simple. And then I'm also grepping and I'm looking for the word total. If I went back to my command here and I just piped off this, so you can see the file I actually, it would open up and it, it found the total test time at the very bottom here. Okay, the next one is I'm actually going to actually open up a file and I'm just gonna do a simple replacing a word from removing to install. And then I'm actually gonna copy the file back, contents, and then do a diff. So you found the word, it's replacing it. It's gonna save it off. And now it's just gonna uh, copy the file back over, replace the original one, and just do a diff. And there you go, you see the difference between the two. And the last one, um, this one here, what it's actually going to do is it's going to look into a directory structure where there's about uh, 15 files. They're, all the files are very similar except for the prefix. It's going to find the right file based off the date and timestamp of the file and return those results. And I wanted to show you um, the importance of logging and the details of that. So if we go down here and I open this up, scroll away to the bottom, you can see that my logging that I have in my code shows me the terminal I used, the directory, the actual file itself, the date and timestamp, the current timestamp, and then the difference in minutes. So as you're developing your logs and you're developing your debugging this, you want to add as much detail as you possibly can to your logging that helps you debug at when you get uh, bugs or errors. Okay, guys, can you switch it back? All right. So one of the things that we did at Harris was uh, we decided with using test complete that we wanted to use Python as our language of choice. And the reason is because a lot of our testing is not just on a Windows environment, but also in embedded systems. And so we decided to use Python because that way our testers could go on the embedded side or on Windows side and not have to learn two different languages. The other thing we found out is a lot of our new grads already had Python knowledge and already had, knew how to use that. And the number of uh, libraries that are available for Python is great. So we decided to use that. The other thing I want to let you guys know is it's really important to have a standard startup script. Um, whatever testing you do, whatever tool you're using, uh, for that application that you want to share that. In a common library, uh, similar to the library I was showing you guys, you guys want to start to share your libraries amongst yourselves so you can extend and also, it's the same thing what Zach was talking about, to speed up your development. You want to make sure your logs uh, are very detailed so that when you have problems or you have issues, you're able to find those very quickly and uh, there's also different types of tests 
that you want to use, especially in a DevOps environment. The solution I had here, if I only did GUI, I would not have been able to put any of my tests in my, my pipeline because it required human interaction. With using uh, the uh, uh, Linux and using the PuTTY scripts, I'm now able to put all my tests in my pipeline if I want. And there's different types of tests. Um, and I want to show you that when we go forward. Um, of course, the unit test is done by developers. And then you can have integration tests, uh, smoke tests, system tests, functional tests, and performance tests. And so one of the things we've done with uh, test complete is we created test tagging. And what that is, is we tag all our tests internally. So we'll, we'll, and the tagging can be multiple tags per test. So I can tag a test as a, a smoke test that I want, or a performance test, or a nightly test. And what we do is uh, we run a script and we'll go through all our suite of tests, look at all the tags, and dynamically build a test suite inside of test complete. See, one of the things you gotta remember is when you're using a pipeline, your center of your universe is Jenkins, and you want Jenkins to kick off your testing. If you're using Zephyr, you're gonna be inside of Zephyr and you're kicking off your test. But inside of Jenkins, you wanna build your test based off the time and day. If you're just having a commit going back, you want a quick turnaround with less than 15 minutes so you don't start to back up your pipeline. Where at night, you could have much more extended testing. And so based off of that, we use our test tags to be able to build, dynamically build our test suites. And the other thing is I wanted to mention, so the automated tests that we did with the putty, it used to take three, uh, three days to do the testing, it, and it dropped it down to a day and a half. Our accuracy uh, using the putty and the scroll back was 100% instead of relying on OCR, which at best is maybe 80 or 90%. Um, the detail logs helped us to be able to troubleshoot faster. And in fact, one time I took the libraries that we had and I went to another program and I was able to develop very quickly um, some testing that normally would have took six months that I was able to do in two weeks because of the common files. And takeaway is you can, you can test non-GUI environments. A lot of people never think you can. Uh, you can ensure accuracy using a terminal like PuTTY. You want to leverage your logs for quick analysis, and you want to be able to deploy your test suites uh, in a DevOps uh, pipeline through Jenkins or, or Bamboo or something else. So thank you very much. Any questions? Felt like I went really fast. I don't know if I did. You guys are experts then. Yes, sir. No, I've used uh, QTP. I've used Perl. I've done homegrown tools also, but not that. I've also used SOAP UI. Other questions? All right, thank you very much.